Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 1 of Road to Colonization, the sequel to Road to Exploration, and we start with a very important launch. Now, after the finale of Road to Exploration, we have found ourselves with a distinct lack of a space station in orbit, and we want to build ourselves a much bigger, more industrial one, which is going to be really awesome, and you're going to see part of, the, part of why it's going to be so awesome today. So the first launch is... I guess kind of the core. It doesn't really have a core, but this is one of the big parts, so I thought it would be a good idea to put this up first. So we've put it on top of a Pulsar Y, and we're going to set it on up to orbit so that it can sit at about 120 kilometers um, and be the benchmark where we can come and attach everything else to. It's going to be a very big station. It won't be that many parts. Well, it won't be that big a space station. I mean, I built a one kilometer space station one time. <laughs> but it should be pretty big. Um, and it won't be a ton of parts because it's using big parts, like really big fuel tanks. This right now is a big fuel tank. Um, like really big. And there's going to be like three of these. Uh, three of these things, as you just saw there. Um, and pro potentially more in the future. And then it's obviously going to have habitation. It's not going to be so much focused on science, but it will have a science lab because it might as well. Um, and it will have a very special part, which we'll see later. But anyway, let's go and land this stage first. This is obviously the Pulsar Y, which you'll remember from last series. My big heavy lift two-stage rocket, which basically Falcon 9s, as you know, it lands, but not on a cool platform, because I've tried that in the past, and it's really hard. Um, I actually did manage it, but I kind of smashed the rocket one time, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'd need a really big platform. Um, anyway... So yeah, this will descend. Since this is the first episode and it's been a while, I thought I'd leave it all in so you can see the beauty of the descent of the Pulsar Y. The five-engine, kind of Saturn v sort of thing. Using its air brakes to slow down, deploying the parachutes after a quick burn of the engines, and hopefully um, not slamming into the ocean too hard. Um, and yeah, so now we'll just fire up the engine at the last bit, just to slow ourselves down a touch so that we don't hit the ocean too hard. And there we go. Beautiful. That's a lot of money back. Anyway, back in orbit, we need to get well, into orbit, I guess back in suborbital trajectory we need to get into orbit, but that doesn't sound like it makes any sense. Anyway, so yeah, this is here. We don't really need to do anything else because we don't have to dock with anything. This is the first module. It's got a bunch of big docking ports on it because, well, we're building a big space station. We need the senior docking ports. But the one thing that does need to go um, go somewhere is the second stage. This needs to go back to Kerbin because we want that sweet, sweet money back. We do have quite a lot of money right now. At the start of this series, we have about three and a half million funds um, because the Duna missions were so well, the Duna mission was so kind of successful and gave so much money to us, um, which was great. Um, here we are just coming over the KSC, landing rather beautifully. Fairly close, not bad. I've done better, um, but, you know, close enough. But yeah, so about three and a half million funds. This space station costs a lot. By the end of this, uh, by the end of this episode, we might be more on more like 2.8 million funds because there's a very expensive module on it which I kind of want to keep a secret until you see it, because it's awesome. Uh, but anyway, another launch um, of this uh, space station part. Don't worry, this isn't an entirely an episode on building a space station, just largely. Um, this is on a Pulsar X, I think, yeah, Pulsar X, which um, is the single stage to orbit 30-ton lifter, which can land fairly accurately with the whole rocket, because it's a single stage to orbit. And uh, yeah, it's going to head on up there. It's going to deliver its payload, and it's going to do... It's going to do a great job. This is the core module and the main docking adapter, I believe. Yeah, I think it is. Um, and this is going to go and dock to one of the top docking ports on the fuel tank. And yeah, the uh, space station should take shape pretty well today. It won't be finished. It's a big space station. For once, I remembered to do clamshell fairings because they look so much nicer, but I always forget because I'm lazy. Um, we actually get just behind the space station, which means we'll be able to... Well, uh, the module we're going to dock with, it's not a station yet. Um, but yeah, um, we'll be able to get behind that and um, and dock to it with a little less fuel, which is nice because we don't have a ton of fuel left on this um, Pulsar Y because this is a pretty heavy module. You can see it pretty well now. It's got a bunch of rockets strapped to the side to make maneuvering easier. Um, but yeah, you can see it's got its science lab, the command module, which is the three-person module because I thought that looked better on the space station. And this kind of weird um, docking ring, which looks a little weird, but I think it's good enough. Um, better than anything else I could build without the kind of, you know, that multi-part that you get in the middle of space stations. Yeah, anyway, skipping through a bit of orbiting, here we are just getting there, um, getting to the space station. I need to transfer some fuel around because two of the rocket engines I'm not going to fire up because they'll destroy the solar panels. You can see I've put the solar panels below those rocket engines really stupidly, so I'm just using two solar panels and two rockets rather than four of each. But uh, yeah, it's fine. We've got more than enough thrust and delta V. 
I always pack a little too much for orbital maneuvering because I'm always a little bit... Well, sometimes stuff goes wrong and I lose vehicles. Um, early parts of uh, building the Hermes station in Road to Exploration show that off quite well. But anyway, here we are, just getting up to the tank. It's uh, fairly easy, we just need to dock onto this end, which has a probe core on it, um, because that's the way it should be orientated. Not that it makes much difference, but I like things to look like how I built them. But yeah, this is a huge amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer in that tank. It's not full right now, because it would have been too heavy to launch on my current vehicle. But if you watch my live stream, you'll have seen some of my ideas for um, a bigger... Uh, a bigger launch vehicle, which is massive. And we're just uh, twisting this around a little bit so it's in a better orientation, um, so that it's not quite so skew-f. It won't be perfect, obviously, because, you know, things twist around, but I want it to be as good as possible. Uh, but yeah, so, there we go, it's looking, it's taking shape. We're gonna have two more of these fuel tanks on the two of the other docking ports, so we're gonna have some habitation modules, we're gonna have a life support module, and we're gonna have a mystery module. What could it be? Keep watching! Um, <laughs> anyway, but we do need to bring back the rocket right now. Um, I've put the uh, periapsis kind of way over there, but we've got a decent amount of fuel left in this rocket, so after losing the fins and doing a bit of deorbiting, we will actually get fairly close to the KSC-ish. Um, I mean, close enough. We've got a bunch of fuel to slow down a bit. Yeah, I always use those, lose those little fins on the outside, but I don't want to put bigger fins on the rocket. Um, because they'd be a bit too cumbersome and make it hard to go backwards. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah, you can see we landed pretty close to the KSC, we get the money back, we get about 98% of the funds back for this, and now, over on Duna, well, actually on Ike around Duna, it's time to leave. Uh, at the near the end of last um, series, we went and explored Ike a bit, but it was just a short mission, we didn't have a base like we have on Duna, so we're just gonna head off in our little um, lander, which is well, needs to go back to the Concordia, the um, mothership around Duna, and do some science, because it gathered a lot of science while it was here. It had a fairly short stay. You can actually see on the alarm clock, I'm coming back a week early, because, I don't know, why not? Um, I might do another uh, expedition to a different biome of Ike in this mission, because we do have enough fuel for that kind of thing. Um, the mission's going to go on for a while, and the Ike crew would probably get kind of bored sitting on the Concordia without the crew having happy fun times on Duna with the rover. They have all the fun toys. These guys are just kind of here, because why not? Uh, no, they're very important and integral part of the team. They are the real science researchers. I mean, they're going to be working in the labs, going to Ike, getting lots of biomes. The people on Duna are just kind of messing around, you know. Anyway, so here we are. Um, we managed to pretty much just leave, as you saw, in almost one burn, if I'd been a little more sure of myself. Um, and we've got a bunch of fuel left. I'm, I thought Ike was a much heavier body than it is. It, its surface gravity seems to be quite low. The orbital velocity is lower than the moon. I guess it just looks much bigger, because it's next to Duna, which is much smaller than Kerbin. I guess I should, you know, kind of be able to see past these things. But hey, it's good. It means that I did have enough fuel to do that. But I always use the KSP cheat, a cheat sheet. If you um, type in KSP Delta V map, it tells you how much Delta V you need to get to go places around the solar system. And that's how I work out how much Delta V I need for all of my probes and vehicles. It's really helpful. And also MechJeb tells you how much Delta V you have while you're building. So that's also helpful if you're thinking about how to build spacecraft to do what I do. Um, or to, you know, just do that kind of stuff. Anyway, here we are coming back to the Concordia. We did this all at four times. Time accelerates, so, you know, it wouldn't take up too much time because we got a lot of station to build. Um, but yeah, these, the crew looking very happy. Valentina at the helm. Um, the, the, the surface, the Duna crew is actually all male. Very, uh, very sexist. Uh, still a lot of sexism in this, uh, uh, in this space company. I mean, women go to space, but only to do the secondary roles, you know? I mean, it's not ideal, and we don't agree with it, but yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of history. <laughs> no, it just kind of happened that way. I wanted the big three to go to Duna, um, because in my head, it's still the big three, and then Valentina, I guess, because I've been playing since point nineteen where they were all guys, and, you know, I, I, I know Bill, I know Bob, I know Jeff. Val's cool, but she, you know, she had her own, she had her own moon. I don't know how I got talking about this, but, uh, whatever. Um, the docking procedure was slow. I needed to fill the air with some pointless bullshit. Um, I'm gonna put the scientist in the lab, Valentina in the command module, and the other guy, the engineer, pff, engineer, in, um, the, in the, um, habitation module. And then we're just gonna add a bunch of this, um, science to the lab. Um, I don't know why I said pff, engineer, I've been watching the Big Bang Theory again, so I'm all like, uh, engineers. Although I totally don't agree with Sheldon on that. Anyway, um, after all of that, we're back on Kerbin. We've got more modules to send up to the station, and this... 
This is, I, this is, I think, the secret module. I've kind of forgotten the order, but yeah, this is the super secret awesome module of awesomeness. And it's launching aboard a Pulsar, I want to say X? Yeah, Pulsar X. Because um, it's pretty heavy, but not that heavy. Um, and the Pulsar X is much nicer because you don't have to catch the, set, uh, the first stage before it slams into the ocean. You can just kind of take your time. So it's great. Although I've been launching way too flat with these, so you keep seeing that they're... Um, Fairing heats up quite a lot. I think I'm launching very flat, which is efficient, but I feel like if it's heating up, that means I'm going to, I'm, I'm having too much drag. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, let's just carry on into orbit, and um, there we go, the big reveal. What is this big blue monstrosity, you may ask? Well, this is a workshop. And what do you build in this workshop, Tape? Well, what you build is rockets, and it has a little launch pad on it. Yes, this is an orbital construction thing, and it's gonna go on the Odin station. Did I say that it was the Odin station? Crap, I should have said that it was the Odin station. But yes, the station is named Odin, because it sounds big and ominous and whatever. But yes, this is gonna be docked to the Odin station. God, I wish I, I can't believe I forgot to mention the name of the ice sock. Anyway, yeah, so this takes rocket parts, which you can mine, basically. It works the same as fuel mining. You mine some raw rocket parts, you kind of ISRU them into rocket parts. I guess you take raw, raw metal, turn them into rocket parts, and then you take those rocket parts and you turn them into rockets. And then you can build stuff in orbit, or you can build stuff on the ground. So one day I could have a colony which is totally self-sustaining and builds its own rockets. How awesome is that? How much is just KSP modding scene is awesome? So yes, this is just an experimental one. It's an incredibly expensive experiment. It is the m more expensive than the rest of the space station combined, I believe, but probably not quite, because it's... Yeah, I think it is, actually. Um, but it should be awesome. This will provide jobs for a lot of astronauts. You can have up to nine people working in this, and we'll be able to produce some things. This is already loaded with rocket parts, so I can start experimenting, but I'm also going to set up a small experimental mining operation on Minmus, so that I can grab... Um, you know, raw rocket parts, turn them into rocket parts, send them here and build rockets for free. Because um, I'm also going to mine the fuel, um, maybe. This sounds like a big job, but probably, because I've got to kind of set up a test version of this so that when I go somewhere like Duna, um, or Lathe, or wherever I decide to live, Drez? Nah, Drez sucks. Um, <laughs> anyway, wherever I decide, I'll be able to build my own rockets, and we'll actually be able to colonize the solar system. This isn't some kind of in quotes colonization, look we're living there. This is, we're moving, we're leaving Kerbin. Kerbin's horrible, we had all these wars, fall of Kerbin, collaborative warfare, it really fucked Kerbin up. We've gotta go, and that's what this is. We're going. <laughs> no, but it would be cool to be able to do all of this stuff. Um, anyway, we're gonna get rid of all the tugs and all of that, and yeah, just look at the majesty of the station as it floats away as we deorbit this. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited about this. It will be really cool to build some stuff in the orbit. This isn't just an experiment as well. It will be useful. Um, we will be able to um, build uh, extra parts if we need to, if the station breaks or we just need something. We don't have to ship it up on a rocket anymore. We can build it. How cool is that? Anyway, so let's deorbit this rocket. Um, annoyingly, I don't have quite enough fuel and I put it in a really bad position. So it just sort of flies over the KSC quite high up before it's even started to taste the flames, although there they are. And then it sort of flies over the other continent on the other side of the giant ocean, and then, you know, kind of lands pretty far from the KSC. I don't know how I got it this wrong, but <laughs> apparently I did. I do this, like, all of the time, but I, I, I landed about 2,000 kilometers away. I mean, SpaceX lands on these tiny barges, but I land in a 2,000 kilometer margin. I think I'm, I think I'm winning. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but whatever. I still got like 75% of the money back, so I guess who cares? Um, still, I lost quite a bit of money, but that's a fairly cheap rocket. Anyway, another bit. What's this? This is a Pulsar Y, and it has another important module. I think it has another fuel module on it. We're not going to put the third one on this episode, but we are going to put the second one on there because this has the solar panels on it and we need all of the things to make it a minimal viable space station. Currently it has fuel and some places to put Kerbals. Um, now it's going to have power and then we're also going to send up a life support module so that you could live on this station and it would be great. Um, but obviously it's got to have a few more things. There's going to be some uh, habitation modules with um, uh, cupolas and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, 
there's a lot of these kind of launches in, and obviously maintaining a space station requires quite a lot of launches. But I have been told about this mod um, by uh, uh, by a wonderful viewer um, who uh, who t tells me that there's, that there's a mod that allows you to just kind of automatically do some of the more boring launches. So I might start doing that because you don't want to see every single little crew and fueling. That that's the thing that kind of got me down a bit in the last series with the fueling launches. There were so many of them. Um, and there's going to be a lot of fuel on this now. Um, and a lot of the fuel will be mined, but I might, for a lot of the fuel launches, just kind of use this mod to just sort of put it in orbit and take the money and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, obviously, that might pose a problem with reusable rockets. Uh, I guess if I launch them on a single stage to orbit, though, not so much. So, cool. Maybe we'll try that out. And it could make the series just a little faster, which I think will be good. Anyway, after a bunch of maneuvering in, which we've seen, like, twice this episode, let's just... Let's just see it docking, because we want to see a bunch more maneuvering. It's getting, we're getting on in the episode, but yeah, there we go, it's pretty good. I am going to rotate this, though, I docked it the wrong way, so the solar panels would have been smashed off. And I'm going to put it this way. Um, these are also where everything docks. Um, these, uh, this fuel tank has smaller docking ports on it, and the other one will as well, which will be on the opposite side of the docking ring, um, unlike the um, other fuel tank, which is for bigger modules docking to it. So yeah, that'll um, look nice, and we'll be able to dock some craft to that. We still have the um, kind of moon spacecraft sitting around uh, orbit from Kerbin, which we saved from the Hermes. Anyway, we're going to deal with this uh, little engine module and uh, just let that go off. And look at how beautiful this is. We're going to decouple this now. This was on there to kind of give us control, but now we've got a pro now we've got everything we need. We have power generation and um, a probe core on there, so we don't need this little module anymore. So yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, so the final thing we need to bring up after... Oh no, I did land the rocket stage. I don't think I put it in the video, whatever. Who cares? Um, I did put the land the... Did I? Maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Um, I, I'll check next time. But anyway, yeah, we're going to launch um, th another module. This is the life support module, and this is the last thing we're launching, and we've had a lot of launches, so let's just cut through them and post. Here we are just going up, and here we are getting into orbit. It's all beautiful, all of that stuff. Um, I thought maybe we didn't need to see the whole launch this, uh, for the final one, because it was a lot of the same stuff, and it's building a space station. There's going to be a little more of this next episode. We are going to do some other things. When we've still got a moon base, we've got a bunch of stuff to do on Duna, and we've got some, um, you know, missions going out into the solar system sort of stuff we've got to get, uh, got to do. More probe missions for a while. We need to get some more successful probes. A lot of the ones I've sent to Jewel and Eve have either exploded or run out of electricity, um, so we want to work on that. Anyway, we're in orbit. Talking of cutting things out, let's just cut out all of the maneuvering, because we've seen that a bunch this episode, you know, it's the same, I did pretty well, it, we, we were pretty efficient, and here we are, just docking on, this has a bunch of life support, it has four, well, no, I mean, it has, I think, double the uh, life support of the Hermes, or maybe the same, anyway, it has basically four food and supplies things and two waste uh, containers, which is a lot of life support, because there's going to be a lot of Kerbals on this. It also has a massive RCS store and two giant batteries. Anyway, we're going to deorbit the uh, little probe body thing, and yeah, it spins around a bit, but it does deorbit, so that's good. And let's get a quick look at the station. Looking nice, looking pretty cool. Looking that, got that little um, launch pad on there. We're going to be building rockets in space. It's going to be great. Anyway, and the final thing is obviously just bringing back the booster. It lands really close to the KSC. If I had a zero inclination orbit, I would have almost landed on the launch pad. That would have been so cool, but it was taken from me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you're looking forward to this series. It's going to be so awesome, and it will be much faster than the last series, because the last one was, you know, it was nice, it was slow, it was calm, but this is going to be awesome. We're going to colonize, colonize the whole solar system. It's going to be great. And I'm really looking forward to it. But anyway, um, this is the end of the episode. And if you want to go check out a couple more videos, there is a video, well, a live stream that I uploaded, which I did a couple days ago, where I'm working on a giant SSTO, basically like the Pulsar X you just saw, but five times as big, but even bigger than that. And it's awesome and it kind of works, and I mostly just talk to the chat and get distracted. There's also a subscriber designs video where we look at this awesome VTOL and this J20 fighter jet and a giant SSTO, which I don't quite get to orbit, but it's still pretty cool and it's stuff other people built. So yeah. Anyway, and there's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.